just confirm me good evening everyone am i audible to you am i audible to you good okay fine let's start our today's class in today we are going to see about the system and cell physiology mcqs okay we have completed the non core data core data cell biology genetics okay from today uh, we are starting a new chapter that is system and physiology cell physiology blood and circulation and the questions are related to the blood and circulation okay so see we have a three different types of cells blood cells which means a, a red blood cell platelets and wbc is it right and uh, in red blood cell what are all the characteristic features of rbc which is bicorgave in shape and it has a no nucleus within it no nucleus means a non nucleated or n nucleated okay all the words uh, denoting the same meaning and also it has a hemoglobin hemoglobin is a polypeptide which is a protein it is a globin protein particularly it is the one going to carry the oxygen and it is going it is a deliver it is going to deliver the oxygen to all the tissues right and what is the life span of this particular rbc it is 120 days okay and what will be the graveyard of rbc what will be the grade graveyard of rbc that will be the spleen okay what is the function of rbc it is going to transport oxygen from the lungs to the body tissues and what is the main uh, protein which involving in transferring this uh, oxygen from the lungs to the body tissues that is nothing but a hemoglobin it is the one carry the carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs and from the lungs it is going to carry the oxygen to the tissues okay now Uh, coming to the platelet it is small a disk shaped cell fragments it has also no nucleus and it is an essential for blood clotting we have a 13 blood clotting factors in our uh, body particularly um, in the platelets okay and it is the one involving in the clotting of blood okay when a cut occur immediately the blood has to be clot okay for that clotting this platelets plays an immense role and this this is the one going to release a growth factor for the tissue repair right and in white blood cells we have a two types in this granulocytes and agranulocytes granulocytes means it has a granules in their cytoplasm and the nucleus will be segmented into lobes in agranulocytes there will be no granules present in case of agranulocytes absence of granules here the nucleus are not segmented and what is the uh, function of this particular granulocytes they are the part of the immune system and they are plays an important role against the infection and they are uh, this a granulocytes also involved in the immune response so white blood cells the function of white blood cells is uh, they are going to involve in the immune system okay acts against immunity now uh, neutrophils eosinophils and basophils these are all the types which is coming under the granulocytes because these neutrophils eosinophils and basophils all these cells have a granules in their cytoplasm so these three will be placed under the granulocytes in neutrophils neutrophils okay uh, multi lobed nucleus it has a multi lobed nucleus and this is the uh, cell which has been secure a major portion under the wbc most abundant white blood cells will be the neutrophils and this neutrophils the function of this neutrophils they are the one phagocytes a bacteria and a fungi phagocytes means what that is an uh, engulfing process they are the one engulfing the microorganisms and digest the bacteria and eosinophils it is a bilobed nucleus okay it looks like this a bilobed and it is it has an granules which is red orange in color and it has a parasitic it is used to combat parasitic infections and this is the cell involved in the allergic reactions this will be a questionable area and basophils this is also a bilobed nucleus or we can say the a shaped nucleus and here the granules will be looks like a blue purple in color 
and this is the cell it is the one going to release the histamine heparin and during the allergic reactions what is the function of this heparin it is the anticoagulating agent present within the human body this is the protein which makes the blood not to coagulate okay if the if a uh, cut occur if the blood makes a contact with uh, air immediately it tends to coagulate because there will be the absence of heparin outside the body in uh, within the body the blood flows freely it is not undergoing the process of coagulation why because of the presence of the protein heparin right now a granulocytes we know that uh, uh, what is the meaning of a granulocytes and lymphocytes monocytes are the two important cells which is going to involve in the immune system which is placed under the a granulocytes because they are the uh, they these are the cells which has no granules within it and here there are large round nucleus and we have a small amount of cytoplasm and what is the function of lymphocytes b uh, uh, here we have two different types of lymphocytes b cell b lymphocyte and t lymphocyte b cell b lymphocyte is the one going we we have a further uh, two different cells and let's see for example uh, lymphocytes we have a two different cells one is b lymphocyte and t lymphocyte and these t lymphocyte we have a further three different types cytotoxic t lymphocyte t helper cells and cytotoxic suppressor cells okay and b cells we have a two different cells one is plasma plasma cell and memory cell this plasma cell is the one involved in the production of antibodies and this memory cell is the one involved in the keeping the memory of the infection if a bacteria uh, infect the human body for the first time it, it will take certain time to produce the antibodies so when the second time uh, the same bacteria comes the memory cells keeps the memory of the first infection and the production of antibody will be very easy for the second time this is what the function of the memory cells right now um, what is the function of monocytes monocytes is the larger cells which is kidney shaped wbc okay and see uh, this monocytes is the one differentiate into the macrophages what is the difference between monocytes and macrophages these are this is the most important cells it is called as the uh, monocytes when it reaches the tissues it is differentiated into the macrophages okay and this is the cell which has been differentiated into macrophages as well as the dendritic cells and what is the function of this monocytes again once again this is also involved in the phagocytosis process and my question to all of you is when the site of infection comes when if the infection comes which type of wbc which types of cells of wbc will reach the site of infection for the first time we have a five different types of cells under WBC: neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, uh, lymphocytes, and monocytes. Which cells of WBC reach the site of infection firstly? Very good. That will be the neutrophils. And uh, these are all the basic information. I want you to thorough with this. And what is the first answer for this first question? Which of the following is the primary site of hematopoiesis in adults? Which of the following is the primary site of hematopoiesis in adults? Before that, what is hematopoiesis? What is hematopoiesis? See, hematopoiesis is the process of blood cell formation. The formation of blood cell is called as the hematopoiesis, not only RBC. All the types of blood cells is going to form and that particular process is said to be as the hematopoiesis. Okay. And this is the one developed from the hematopoietic stem cells. This is the cell which is named as hematopoietic stem cell involved in the protection of 
uh, blood cell okay and that process is said to be as the hematopoiesis and these processes happen in the bone marrow here three things plays an important role what is the name of the cell involved in the production of a blood cell and what is the name of the process and where is the site of production of blood cell is exactly happening okay and what is the site in case it will be a fetus in case it will be a fetus it will be happen in the bone marrow spleen liver and yolk sac in case if it is an adult it will be happen in the bone marrow primarily the bones which is present in the pelvis vertebrae sternum and ribs okay these are all the primary site where the blood cell will be formed and what is the cells which is going to produce this blood cell means hematopoietic stem cells okay and it is multipot multipotent stem cells this is the one capable of gives rise to all types of blood cells and what are all the stages of development so first one will be the hematopoietic stem cells it gives rise to the many progenitors okay and that progenitor we have a different types of progenitor one is common myeloid progenitor common lymphoid progenitors okay and this progenitor gives rise to different types of cells and what will be the particular lineages from which progenitor which cell is going to produce in case of myeloid lineage rbc that is erythrocytes megakaryocytes that is platelets granulocytes that is uh, wbc and particularly the lymph uh, neutrophils eosinophils basophils monocytes and macrophages okay these are all the cells which is coming under the myeloid lineage and in lymphoid lineage that will be gives rise to t cell b cell and uh, natural killer cells that is nk cells okay what are all the growth factors involved in this particular process erythropoietin erythropoietin is a name of the hormone produced by which organ just answer for my question erythropoietin is a hormone okay that hormone is secreted by which organ very good that will be the kidney in kidney they are going to produce a hormone called erythropoietin that is the one stimulate the red blood cell production in thrombopoietin this is the one in stimulates the platelet production and colony stimulating factor is the one they are going to stimulate white blood cell production see we have a different types of cells rbc platelets and w, uh, white blood cell in case of rbc that production is stimulated by erythropoietin and platelet production was stimulated by thrombopoietin and white blood cell uh, stimulation will be stimulated by the colony stimulating factor and what are all the process involved in this particular production of blood cells proliferation that is multiplication differentiation that is uh, for example monocytes will be differentiated into macrophages that is what a process of differentiation maturation means at a particular when it reaches the particular site it will be uh, growing certain size that is what a maturation regulatory factors we have a uh, different factors which involved in the process of the hematopoiesis that is a uh, transcription factor particularly gata1 pu1 runx1 this is uh, this just give less importance for uh, all these factors okay just know some transcription factors and cytokines and chemokines are involved in the process of hematopoiesis okay now these are all the disease and disorders involved in the related to the blood cells see a plastic anemia this is the condition when the bone marrow is getting failed okay this a failure of bone marrow results in aplastic anemia okay and this function in a blood cell production will be result because of the syndrome name named as myelodysplastic syndromes that is mds and leukemia we know that this will be the blood cancer um, abnormalities of the cells particularly the wbc okay it results in the leukemia okay Uh, this is what the process because this word has been mentioned in your syllabus so it is very important to read about that so now come and to come come back to the question which of the following is a primary site of hematopoiesis in adults i think everybody has answer for this question that is obviously the bone marrow right which type of stem cells gives rise to all blood cells which type of stem cell gives rise to all blood types
what will be the name of the stem cell just tell me of course it will be the multipotent stem cell and what will be the exact name of the stem cell hematopoietic stem cell okay multipotent hematopoietic stem cell in the bone marrow this is the one used to differentiate into all types of the blood cells right now which growth factor is primarily responsible for the stimulation of our uh, red blood cell that is rbc production which growth factor is involved in the involved in the production of rbc production very good that will be the erythropoietin that will be released by the kidneys which of the following is not a stage in a maturation of rbc which of the following is not a stage in the maturation of rbc pro erythroblast myeloblast reticulocyte and erythrocyte in the human physiology i think in the ppt which was given by the sir there will be a flow chart okay just uh, don't neglect that flow chart that will be very 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 important if you read that flow chart the entire concept will be covered under that particular flow chart okay kindly have a glance at that ppt right see myeloblast see this is the precursor to the granulocytes and this sites uh, this cells will be related to the wbc okay so the stages of red blood cells will be pro erythroblast basophilic erythroblast polychromatic erythroblast orthochromatic erythroblast reticulocyte and finally it will be differentiated into the erythrocyte now which cytokine is most important for the growth and differentiation of megakaryocyte into the platelets megakaryocyte is the name of the cell it is the one gives rise to a, or differentiate into a platelet that will be associated with which of the cytokine interleukin 2 thrombopoietin erythropoietin granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor that will be the thrombopoietin this is the one primary regulator of platelet production it is the one uh, stimulates the thrombopoietin uh, of the uh, megakaryotes see don't confuse with this okay uh, we have rbc and wbc and platelets rbc stimulation was uh, associated by or uh, stimulated by erythropoietin platelets will be thrombopoietin wbc will be the colony stimulating factor right now what is the which of the following is a correct sequence of white blood cell development okay before that i myself shows all the thing okay so that it will be easy for you wait 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 let me show you this is not clear actually uh just bear with the picture okay see let me show you how it has been differentiated see this is the hematopoietic stem cell this has been further differentiated into myeloid stem cell and the lymphoid stem cell okay in myeloid stem cell we have a megakaryoblast 
pro erythroblast myeloblast and monoblast okay here this mega karyoblast will be differentiated into mega karyocyte and from this mega karyocyte is it has been differentiated into the platelets for now just adjust with this picture just uh, just understand uh, the just uh, listen to me properly what i have been used uh, which word i'm using after that i'll show you the clear picture i'll upload in the group okay mega karyoblast it has been differentiated into mega karyocyte and this mega karyocyte is the one differentiated into the platelet platelets okay now this pro erythroblast is the one differentiated into the reticulocyte reticulocyte is the one differentiated into the erythrocyte that is rbc and next the second third one will be the myeloblast myeloblast further differentiated into basophil neutrophil eosinophil okay these are all the three cell basophil neutrophil and eosinophil coming under the myeloblast under the myeloid uh, stem cell and the monoblast will be giving rise to the or differentiated into the monocyte okay and in the lymphoid stem cell it has been given into a lymphoblast and this lymphoblast will be differentiated into the natural killer cell okay and this natural killer cell is the one of the differentiation under the lymphoblast also the small lymphocyte this small lymphocyte further differentiated into the t lymphocyte and the b lymphocyte okay this is what a flow chart related to the hematopoietic stem cell okay i'll upload a new picture okay now uh, answer for this question somehow you can eliminate the option at least which of the following is a correct sequence of wbc development see myeloblast is the uh, is the thing okay myeloblast will be further differentiated into a progranulocyte progranulocyte to the myelocyte myelocyte to metamyelocyte my metamyelocyte to the band cell band cell is the one gives rise to the neutrophil don't worry i'll upload a, a flow chart okay a, a proper flow chart i'll upload it okay what is the which of the following is a primary function of plasma in the blood which of the following is the primary function of the plasma in the blood that will be transporting uh, nutrients and hormones okay which is the one involved in transporting oxygen that will be the hemoglobin okay and forming the blood clots will be coming under the platelets destroying the pathogens is somewhat related to the wbc and here they are asking the primary function of plasma and this plasma is securing 55% okay the composition of plasma will be the 55% um in the blood okay i i i want you to refer the ppt which has been uh, given by the sir in the human physiology he i think he have uh, he added all the important how many percentage it is serum and plasma it covered all the important features okay if possible i'll do it uh, which uh, plasma protein is most important for maintaining the osmotic pressure of the blood there are most uh, there are three different proteins which is coming under involved in the plasma protein that will be fibrinogen globin and the albumin protein okay and here osmotic pressure will be maintained by which of the following for plasma protein that will be obviously the albumin okay and this albumin is the most abundant plasma protein which is the one involved in the osmotic pressure of the blood we can also say water balance 
okay this is the one helps to keep the fluid from leaking out of blood vessels into tissues right and which plasma protein is essential for blood clotting we have a globin protein we have fibrinogen and we have albumin protein this is the one involved in the osmotic pressure and which of the following protein plasma protein involved in the blood clotting that will be obviously the fibrinogen okay see this fibrinogen is a plasma protein it is converted into the fibrin okay during the clotting process and is the last step happens in the clotting of blood and this fibrin forms the mesh okay it's like a net like structure that helps to stabilize the blood clots okay and plasma helps in the regulation of ph in the body by acting as a the most the important word actually it is how this plasma is regulating a ph what is the special i'm sorry what is the special characteristic features of plasma it will be acting as a buffer and what will be the name of the buffer uh, for example what which buffer is involving involving in uh, trans transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide what will be the name of the buffer bicarbonate okay now which component of plasma is primarily responsible for immune response which component of plasma is primarily in responsible for immune response that will be the globulin protein if you find the word globulin they are the one involved in the production of antibodies okay i'm sorry plasma without clotting factors is known as plasma without a clotting factors is known as that will be serum plasma without rbc is known as plasma without an rbc is known as see plasma without a clotting factors is known as serum plasma without rbc is known as very good that will be lymph super uh, which of the following is not a function of plasma which of the following is not a function of plasma think and answer the question carrying the oxygen to the tissues that will be the function performed by the hemoglobin okay plasma is the one they are the one transport uh, many substances and this oxygen is primarily carried by the rbc that is erythrocytes because of the presence of hemoglobin and there is no point of having this plasma to transport this oxygen and that will be the duty of rbc now see there are uh, different blood groups we have a different blood group that is a b c uh, sorry a b a b and o okay and the antigens based on the antigens present on the surface of the rbc we can categorize the blood group if the in, in case we are having a a blood group then the antigen present on the surface of rbc will be the antigen a if b antigen is present then uh, their blood group will be b and if both the antigen a and b antigen present in the rbc then the blood group will be ab if no antigen present then the blood group will be o okay so if the antigen is a then the antibody will be b if the antigen is b then the antibody will be a and see in a b blood group the, both the antigens are present and see here there will be no antibodies will be present here in in o blood group 
there will be no antigen but here a anti a and anti b body uh, antibody b will be present see this is an important thing which will be considered as a universal donor and which will be considered as a universal recipient these are all the things we have to follow here and also see we have an rh factor rh factor is an important component we have r uh, see this is the basic blood group a b a b and o and we are having a positive and a negative b positive and b negative how that positive and negative will be identified that will be the presence of an important factor called the rh factor see if if it is a positive blood group then they have a d antigen on the surface of the rbc okay in case if it is a negative blood group they don't have any antigen d antigen present on the rbc okay this is how we are categorizing whether the person will be positive or the negative okay Yeah, we know uh, what is blood group and uh, we know what are all the type of system. See, in ABO system, we are categorizing what are all the blood groups. A, B, A, B and O. In our system, we are uh, categorizing, we are uh, segregating a person whether they are positive or negative. Okay. We know what are all the antigen present in the uh, which blood group and what are all the antibody present in the blood group. See. Why the antigen is present as A in the A blood group and the antibody is B? Because to avoid the coagulation. Okay, that is why if a person is having an A blood group, he can receive only a uh, A blood group. Okay, only the A compatibility between the person A blood group and the A blood group will be compatible. Why? Because there will be the presence of the antibody. If a B blood group, if a person having a B blood group, is donating a person with the A blood group, then it, reels it, uh, it results in the coagulation, okay? Because of the presence of A antibody, right? These are all an important things you have to keep in mind. And in, uh, if a person having a positive uh, D antigen, that it, then it will be the positive blood group. If they having a no D antigen, then it will be the negative blood group. See, e O blood group is considered as an universal donor. Why? Because it has no antigen. It has no antigen. Okay. See, uh, what is antigen and what is antibody? What is antigen and what is antibody? Just answer for my question. Which is present, which is going to act against the infection? What is antigen and what is antibody? What is, uh, which is refers to as the foreign particle? Antibody is the one acts against the infection. Antigen is the one, uh, is a foreign particle coming into our body. Okay, that is what antigen and antibody. Okay, here, if it is, if a person having, a, if I am an O blood group a person, I can give, uh, I can donate my blood to any of the person having an A blood group or B blood group or even an AB blood group or even an O blood group. So, it will be considered as an universal donor. Why? Because there will be no antigen present in the O blood group. Okay, and AB positive will be the universal recipient. He can he or she can receive a blood uh, receive a blood from any of the person because it has a both the antigen it has a antigen and it has both uh, b antigen so he can receive from any of the person a blood group b a b or even o right and see uh, pregnancy time do the pregnancy time if a mother is if a mother is a negative blood group this is a mother and this is a fetus if a mother is a negative blood group and if a fetal baby if the baby is a positive blood group during the delivery right the baby has to be come out from the body of the mother when it come when it happens when the baby is getting out from the body of the mother some of the blood group will be reach the mother Okay, see here, the baby will be positive blood group and the mother will be a negative blood group. If it is a negative, he, it is a positive. So, this body of the mother is going to synthesize.
peptides and antibody okay they are going to blood group it results in the antigens if the second for the second time again if the baby is a positive blood group the antibody will be present inside the body of the mother it will be reaches the fetus and it will kill the fetus okay it will kill the baby for that the person if if it is if it is an incompatibility occurs the doctor will receive will give a passive vaccination to the uh, parent to the mother within 72 hours right this is what a phenomena we are calling as the hemolytic anemia we can call them as a hemolytic disease hope you all getting my point right for the first baby there will be no complications for both mother as well as the baby for the second mother the already the antibody has been synthesized inside the body of the mother it will kill the baby for the second time okay so this is the condition we are calling as the hemolytic disease right now um these are all the matching type there is no need point of having confusion here that's all about the blood groups we have three more time three more minutes so we solve some more questions these are all the basic question actually uh, which of the blood group is known as the universal donor we know that the donor will be the o blood group right and universal recipient will be the ab blood group and uh, in case of rh factor it was related to the d antigen okay and c answer for this question if a person if a person with a blood type a if a person with a blood type a and receives c this is a person having a a blood group a blood group means he have an a antigen and b antibody okay now he is receiving a blood from a person with the b blood group he is receiving a blood from the person who is having a b blood group now he is having a b antigen he is having a b antigen and he he is having a a antibody right now what type of reaction might occur what type of reaction might occur if whether that will be a no reaction whether it will be a hemolytic transfusion reaction anaphylactic reaction no effect due to the rh factor and what will be the important thing it is happens here see if a person having a a blood group and if a person having a b blood group okay and they uh, the blood transfusion occurs between these two uh, person and as i said before a blood group having an a antigen and b antibody and b blood group have a b antigen and a antibody now the b is getting inside the body of the a blood group now the human body which is receiving the b blood group will have a bigger system so they have a lots and lots of a antigen a antigen and they have a b antibody they are very higher and if a, uh, during the blood transfusion we are going to get milligram right we are not going to take a liters and liters of blood from the receiver we are going to take a small amount okay what are all the necessity we are getting uh, according the amount will change now the antibody present in the a blood group will be acts against the b antigen okay the antibody b will be acts against the b antigen and results in the agglutination and it results in the hemolytic transfusion reaction okay this is how the the compatibility between the transfusion of blood is very very important okay that's all for today we have studied blood corpuscles we have studied hematopoiesis and we have studied blood groups and the, the we have also have studied a plasma function the only thing is remaining is hemoglobin and hemostasis these two are remaining we'll deal in tomorrow's class do you have any doubts any doubts that's all for today if you have any doubts you can stay or else you can leave the class